The next steps are rounding and backing and spine lining. All these steps are designed to give structural integrity to the book. Rounding is to um, put a, a round shape into the spine of the book. You gently tap the spine of the book with a hammer as you use your fingers and thumb to pull the upper sections away from the spine. If you put a little bit of moisture on your fingers, it helps to pull, pull the uh, sections forward as you tap the spine with a hammer. Most books say to aim to get a, a third of a circle into the shape of the spine, but for smaller books I think this is excessive, so um, maybe more of a quarter. The shoulders are one and a half times the board thickness. So the board that I'm using is two millimeters, so I'm going to put three millimeter shoulders on the book. Backing is the process of putting shoulders on a book. It uses some specialized book binding tools. Backing is usually done in a lying press, but I'm going to use my uh, finishing press on legs so I can do it on the bench and film it easier. Backing boards, which are these wedge-shaped boards, and then a hammer with a dome face to it. Put the text block between the backing boards. A little bit of moisture helps hold the boards in place, lined up with the three millimeter marks that you've made. Put that into the press. You really need to make sure that the boards are aligned with the mark for the shoulders. So you need to um, fiddle around with a little bit, uh, a fair bit of tapping and back and forth iterations will get get everything aligned nicely. Once everything's aligned, do the press up tightly. And this is where the lying press has an advantage. You can put a lot more pressure on it with this little finishing press. I don't want to damage it by over tightening it. But you can see how the boards have already started to push the shoulders out on the book. And then using the hammer lightly at first, just go along um, from the head to the tail, starting to tap just away from the the center of the spine. Uh, as the, the sections start to roll over, you can start to move towards the edges of the book, but don't hit the uh, spine right in the center. You, the center section you want to um, have standing vertically and you don't want it squashed. As the sections start to um, fold over, you can start applying, uh, hitting it slightly harder and moving towards the edge uh, until you can, the outer folds are almost folded over at a right angle. When starting out with book binding, this may be one of the trickiest steps to to master. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if anyone masters it. And it's not made any easier by the fact that you normally start with a thinner book and thinner books are harder to back than thicker books. Once the outer sections are close to being at a right angle, uh, you can take the book out. Now you have to start protecting these shoulders that you put a lot of work into, so always put it on the edge of the bench or on, on some scrap board. Uh, but the final uh, step to backing is to crisp up these uh, outer sections with a bone folder. Just use some force to, to um, push them into a board to get the uh, shoulders nice and crisp and as close to a right angle as you can. The next step is to put end bands or head bands on the book. End bands used to be sewn into the text block, like that book. But 
In the uh, 19th century, with the introduction of case bindings, uh, headbands became decorative. So they were pre-made and then just gl glued on. So you have to make a decision about the colour of the headbands. So you have to know what the colour of the cover is going to be. I've chosen that black metallic cloth for the spine and corners and that scrap booking uh, paper for the uh, cover uh, paper. So I've picked a sort of fairly uh, um, neutral coloured headband to match that. So I just put it in into my finishing press uh, just to hold it uh, while I um, use PVA to cut a couple of pieces of headband and glue them at the top. You just want the um, headband to extend uh, past the the uh, top, the head of the text block and the tail. If the headbands extend a little bit past the shoulders you can trim it up later and a little dab of P PVA on the ends will stop the uh, cloth from unravelling. The next step is to line the spine with a loose weave material called scrim. It's also known as mull or super. You cut a piece that uh, fits between the headbands, the, fits between the cloth of the headbands and extends uh, out about two or three inches either side of the shoulders of the book. I just slit it with a, a sharp knife. Once the scrim is cut to the correct size, put a layer of PVA over the spine of the book. At this point, uh, you cover the tapes because the book is now rounded and backed, so you don't need the tapes to be able to move any longer. Once the spine between the headbands is completely covered in PVA, then press the 
uh, scrim down over or pull it down over the spine. Once the scrim's in place, you can um, rub it down underneath some rubbing down paper, which is just some sort of non-stick paper, like baking paper, to really make sure that the um, scrim is uh, keyed in place. Though you will be coating it with a, another layer of PVA soon. The final lining on the spine is a piece of craft paper. Uh, make sure that the grain is going head to tail. Cut it to the exact width from shoulder to shoulder. Full length, you can uh, cut it longer than the uh, spine and paste it down over the end bands, which helps support the end bands. Uh, though I often um, uh, find it a bit of a pain in the neck to uh, trim behind the end bands. Uh, so I'm going to cut it to length um, prior to uh, pasting it on so I don't have to deal with that. Wet the outside of the paper, which will cause it to curl um, in towards the dry side, which helps uh, glue it onto the spine. Apply another layer of PVA to the spine, this time going up over the uh, headbands. Um, it will take a fair bit of PVA this time because the, uh, there's a, a lot of little gaps in the um, weave of the scrim. And then put the craft paper lining in place. There's a bit of unevenness in the spine and uh, the, this paper will tend to uh, crease a little bit. So again, rub it down under a piece of rubbing paper uh, and try and work those uh, little creases and, and out and try and get it nice and smooth. I thought I was done, but uh, having uh, a look at it uh, in different light, I think I can do a better job, so I'm going to go back and try and um, work those uh, creases out. The final thing to do with the uh, lining is to trim up the scrim and tapes. So just push the scrim down into the shoulders with the bone folder. You want to trim the scrim to about uh, uh, 25 millimeters wide. So just uh, measure 25 millimeters with your ruler and make a couple of light marks and draw a line and um, trim that up with a pair of scissors. It looks neat to trim up the ends of the scrim with a, a little diagonal cut like that and then cut the tapes off to about the same width as the scrim and again cut them off at a bit of an angle. Um, I've been told that that helps stop the fabric unravelling 
and I've also been told that it's just aesthetic. In the next video, we'll move on to making the case.